kind of tax, if you use this coin, you say tax goes to the creator, yeah? That's interesting, yeah? So if you have, if you have a use case, you are thinking it would be great to have your own cryptocurrency for it, you build some services around it, and people using it, people have to use your currency because you say, my service is so great, but you can only use it with this currency, then on each transaction you get also additional fees. Interesting aspect, yeah? Uh, but it's not mandatory, you don't have to do this. You can say there's no extra fees. And these extra fees can be also Sam or another mosaic. So it can be it can be that Bill is paying Bob Bob some early money. He have he, he have to pay some Sam as fee, because it's native currency. And he have to pay maybe Alice uh, some lady, but this can be another currency. Because he defined it. Although it can be the same. It's pretty flexible in this way. So can I ask something? Yeah, sure. Regarding this 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 use case here, I mean if you have multiple cryptocurrency or whatever the currency on top of this platform, yeah. uh, is this completely transparent for the user? So if, for example, I'm Bill and I need to deal with all those currencies and I need to know that part of it as a fee will go with with a different currency to someone else. I mean, how, how this works from the user perspective? Yeah, you can... You can it's uh, completely transparent? You can, you, you can look the the mosaic and the overset it runs, yeah? You okay. can you can see, you can you can check out the mosaic and what, what is the overset of it. No, no, but I, I, I'm asking if, if, as a user, I need to take care or I need to know those kind of stuff, like what kind of fees, with which kind of, what kind of currency will go to someone, or this is completely. Like, like, to some paying to Bob like ten. Uh, to some degree, you have to know it because if 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 the if uh, the tax to Alice is maybe uh, in a in a currency you don't even have, then it won't work. Won't be working. Yet. Ah, okay. You, it's not it's not a uh, exchange in the background or something like this. Yeah? Okay. But uh, uh, this is a theoretical thing. Uh, I don't think that everyone uses this library now with another currency that we send. And the same of you have already. Okay. So now what, what's other uh, attributes such a mosaic can have? Yeah. You can say it's a free transfer, transferable, like Bill designed his Bill coin. So it can be transferred between people uh, as however they want here. Yeah? And it can be non transferable, which means non is relative. It means Alice can send it to someone and he can only send it back. There are certain use cases where this is interesting. Example, it could be some kind of tickets, tickets for a event, yeah? So to, to, to prove you have a ticket, you send it back to me before you bought it. So and, then you, sell it. and then you, or you can sell it. No, you cannot sell it. Actually. Yeah, yeah, you cannot resell it. Yeah, it's yeah. also great, yeah? You can only uh, use it by sending it back and uh, prove that you own a ticket. And you, you cannot even resell it between other ones. No, because uh, this is not working. Okay. You can only give it back. Or resell the, the whole wallet. Yeah, that's interesting. That's very interesting because it's really worth working and in a secure way. That's that's. Okay. We will come to that later. That's that's one of the advantages of the uh, multi-signature system that NAM uses. You can you can basically hand over an account to someone else and give him the ownership of the account without ever give him your private key. You only say, uh, I'm now not the normal address, I'm now a multi-signature address, and this other addresses are the cosigners, and I can say there's only one cosigner. One of one is required to make transactions, and this basically means the, the original address become a multi sectional address and the private key lose any importance and only the, the one other address you said is the one of one 
uh, multi signature uh, co signer is basically the owner because only he can make transactions. This is a way how you really can create accounts, addresses. Could you also provide a one use case which you're thinking about? I mean, with these non transferable assets, well, what kind of use case do you have for that? For the non transferable uh, SSH tickets, yeah, for uh, example. Tickets, okay. Yeah. But uh, I think, and that's the interesting part, I think uh, name, is a, name is really a toolbox. And uh, I think they, they didn't even really realize all the stuff you can do with it, yeah? There's, there's very, yeah? So uh, why would you allow uh, multi C accounts for non transferable assets? Because then it basically is the same as transferable assets. Yeah, but the multi signature accounts have nothing to do with Mosex. It has to do with uh, addresses. And uh, it, it was just, we did think about the workaround. Someone did say, but can you Chuck not give it to someone else and then Alice, yeah? And they said, no, he can't, because his account can only send it to Alice. He cannot send it to someone else. But he can, well, not account, his address, yeah? But he can basically give the ownership of, of this address to someone else, which, which is basically a transfer, yeah? So, so you can give away one single address of your of the whole of Yeah, that's, that's it. That's basically a fact in all blockchain solutions. That we as users be talking about wallets, but the blockchain only know addresses. Blockchain don't know which addresses are together in one wallet. It's invisible in the in the blockchain. Blockchain doesn't know it, and there are certain reasons for basically uh, and non <laughs> anonymous yeah exactly because even if a lot of uh, a lot of cryptocurrencies say we are built better in this way uh, bitcoin also have some degree of this because uh, if you doesn't link your name with the address no one knows it and especially if you use the address just once it's pretty hard to track who was it? Who did it? Have in his wallet and use it once. So there's also the mosaic su supply. You also can define how many how many of these are existing, and uh, you can also define if this is fixed. So once I design it, that's it, or it can be changed by the owner of the mosaic. There can be use cases where we are where you want the ability to create new mosaics of the same kind. Um, oh, yeah, there's also one interesting part. It's the, the amount of numbers behind the dot. In Bitcoin, it's eight, and at NEM, it's maximum six. So at the beginning, we did say there are uh, 9 billion minus 1 XMI existing. That sounds pretty much, yeah? But uh, if, you, if you split it down in how many units are there existing, you have to also include these uh, numbers behind the dot. And then there, when Bitcoin is finished mining phase, it's only like 4 times less than, than M, yeah? Okay, so four times or four times or magnitude to the four. If you if you if you just remove the dot yeah. and, and look how much uh, different units you can represent, mm -hmm. then uh, name is same is just like a bit more over four times more okay. than Bitcoin when it's finished mining. In. Somewhere. Yeah, but uh, we have to keep in mind that there already a big part of Bitcoin is mined. So it's already 16 million, I think, or 16 million of maximum 31 million. So. Just, just one more question regarding those 9 million. Why is minus 1? I, I don't know. Uh, it it has some, some, some kind of reason, I don't know. Or someone stole but it's not, it's not the only coin that has this. It's already the same with uh, with uh, next. 
They have uh, <coughs> one billion minus one. That's the golden coin. This is no no. This, 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 this one you sacrifice to your gods or something. I don't know. Ah, <laughs> maybe. Spiritual. <laughs> so, but, but here the, the mosaic supply is basically a fixed supply. Depends. Can be locked into a fixed supply. Depends. You, you can you can choose that you create a mosaic that has only one unit and then you cannot split it. Yeah. You can say there's after the lot is nothing. They can you kind of. But and you, can also, and you can also create something about in the size of nine billion of your coin of your blockchain app. Okay. One billion units. A million, a new million every year. Or do you need to decide for it? Yeah, you're, that's, that's not possible to, to create some kind of logic. So this would be this would be a kind of smart contract, or it would need to be included into the into the name code. That's not existing. You cannot say I have one million and every 365 days another million is created, but I, I cannot change the amount. Mm -hmm. There is some logic behind that this that would be a smart contract. That's not existing. Uh, you can say th there is it's not fixed and I can create new units. So if you you are a company and you hand out shares and these are your company shares and then you say okay, there's the, there's some reason we, we need more shares and you can create more. Yeah, we, we are thinking about that, therefore we are asking. So basically the point is uh, to have monthly new shares. You can do this here. Oh. But we have to trust you. Uh, so, no, we have to trust you because you could uh, also okay, uh, enter be each day <laughs> more. Yeah? Yeah. 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 Not okay. yeah, it's it's not based on a blockchain trust system that you Cannot change your own rules yet. But you can. That, that is, there is no, there's no smart contracts. You cannot do something like that. You, you can, if you say the demand is not fixed, you can create more when, when now you want. Yeah. Okay. So here, here was this fastball signature system of work. The interesting part, I did describe it before a bit. If you, if you have a normal, you cannot design multi-signature uh, uh, the creation of an address. You have to create a normal address, and then you can say, I want to transform this address into a multi-signature address. What is multi-signature? Maybe someone don't know it. That means uh, uh, this whole blockchain technology is somehow based on, on this private and public keys, yeah? And the guy who has the private key can can uh, start transactions or can make any actions with this account with this address, yeah. And multi-signature means I want uh, more people to say yes before it really can happen, yeah. And it's very flexible here. You can have up to thirty required, or or, or you can have Something like there are 30 multi signature accounts linked to this basic address, and it's required then that 15 of them say yes. It's very flexible, and the moment you transform the normal address in a multi signature address, it, it has its own private key, losing any meaning. This, this address, if its own private key can do nothing. But the, the cosigners you did uh, uh, link to it now decide. In that combination as you want. Five of ten, three of four, two of three, or even as I said, one of one. And that basically means I can I can give the control over this address to someone else without share my private key. And later when we hear something about this Apple style service, then I will explain how the, the, the most interesting uh, uh, advantage of this solution over some others is based, based on this. So now, uh, you cannot uh, only sign transactions, you can also uh, 
make a transaction that change the rule set of this construct. Yeah? You can say, okay, uh, if, if it was before, maybe two or three are, are required to make some change, then two or three can say, we will remove this one address. And they can say, we add this other address. So it's totally flexible. Yeah? It's, that some guys deep involved in Bitcoin would dream about to have. <laughs> okay. So, basically, I think this is mostly what I said already. One, thirty-two, one of one. Yeah, that's we did talk about already. Messages. Uh, yeah, I said it's basically a standard for me, not for Bitcoin, uh, that you can, inside the wallet, also make a text and send it to someone else. You can decide if it's clear text, so basically everyone able to read the blockchain can read the message, or it can be encrypted, or you can also use the hex hexadecimal format, because it's easier machine reader, if you want to optimize something. You don't have to use some some hidden code parts to create colored coins, which was never designed when Bitcoin was created. Here you can do it with this with this space, which is I think it's not here written. Yeah, here yeah. with this uh, 320 characters, we encrypted a bit less, which is pretty. Much if you know what to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> but is it possible for third parties to see who's communicating with whom, who's sending messages to whom? Yeah. It it because, because there's no anonymity <laughs> in the world in this okay. stuff, yeah? There's a, it's like Bitcoin, you can read the blockchain. But you cannot read the message. Of it's course, okay. 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 like this message, you can see who is talking to whom. Yeah. Okay. Here you can you can you can see you, you can see it's a transaction. Yeah. Right. From me to you, and there are some fees involved, so it's not free to to uh, waste blockchain space. You have to pay fees for this also. But uh, uh, yeah, it's a normal transaction with uh, attached payload. And this payload uh, can be a message, a clear readable message, it uh, uh, can be an encrypted message, or it can be also a machine readable hex message. So could you give a So if we call it permanent in the blockchain? Yeah. Forever and ever. No. Could you give a few examples what for? I would like to use it. Like, I mean, what, what, what yeah, would be the, the basic, basic, Basically, we will see later if. Uh, some demonstration about this echo style system that's used for proof of existence, but in a way advanced version. This can be done with this. It basically, means nothing else than to put a, a hash of something into the blockchain and, and say, yes, this is the hash of this file, no one oh, else. Okay. This is, uh, that was the first, yeah? So you invented something, <coughs> you, make a, you make a file out of it. Uh, and you, you you write the hash on on the blockchain. If someone other some other guy say I invented it uh, two weeks after you, and maybe somewhere he got a copy of your file, but it's I hope not exactly the same. You will never be able to reproduce this hash. Yeah. And 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 this way you always can prove it. Look at this blockchain. Mine was first, 14 days before him. Yeah. This is the original. Okay, you, you see this use case here. Patents and uh, know your customer and so on. So, and here comes the Nano Wallet. The Nano Wallet is fresh released. It's like it's like one, one, one month or something like this that it's released. And so it's basically in a, in a beta mode, but running on the main chain now. Before it was running on the test chain. Now it was like a bounty to find bugs. It was running months there, and 
Now they think all, all bugs are found, it's in the beta stage, so you can use it on the mainnet, but there's somewhere some, some information used on your own risk. Because after all, we, we talk about real value here and no one wants to give you guarantees about it. Uh, but it's the same with Bitcoin, I think there's somewhere written, it's experimental use on your own risk, still now. So it's not nothing better, nothing more secure. Yeah, Jimmy, was that a horizon of 10 years or something? So <laughs> nobody wants to take the responsibility. Yeah, but, uh, and also, who? <laughs> who? Yeah, who is it? Yeah, yeah, it's it's that, not that easy. Yeah? Natoshi uh, Satoshi Nakamoto, yeah, he, he's responsible. <laughs> 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 he's, he's also responsible for this because he inspired. Yeah, he's all. So, okay, here is our style. Uh, yeah, this this is now this is now one one possible use case. What can you do with this? Yeah, we 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 did talk about the toolbox. What's all possible? But what what can you really do to have a value already now? Yeah, and this is this Apple style service. Basically, the history of this is. Some people who might be involved in altcoins and uh, did look around, did maybe hear a fact on. Some of them know it. Fact on. It's like 13 or 15 on coin market cap. Um, it's a coin that built total around the use case proof of existence and uh, change this by updates and so on. It's the whole, the whole idea behind it. And the NAM guys said, did see this and they have this effect on guys with great marketing and they already signed big deals with companies. So we, we as users might be not very aware of it because they go for the big guys, they go for the big companies and they already have big contracts for their solution. Yeah? And then these NAM guys they look at it and say, hey, we can do it all, all now already with our, with our technology, we can do the same, yeah? And basically this is it, we, they, they say, we do the same and uh, Factum is, is not even have now a, a better release or something like this, they're still in a milestone 2 and uh, stage and, and that is only running on the test bed and they in, in like 4 weeks or something, they said, hey, let's do the same and they released it before, 4 weeks later and it's working already. So just about the possibility that such a, such a toolbox can give you, if you know what to do with it. Well, some say Factum is just a big marketing machinery. <laughs> yeah, but this is also to, be only, to be only dead, they got a lot of funding from big companies, maybe. I don't know, know. They, they, they didn't do their research the right way, I don't know. They're on the west coast of the United States, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But they have for sure a guy who can talk well and is present a lot of these blockchain events in the US and so on. And I think this is helping in this way. Uh, this, this guy is the first time presented in Korea, uh, I think last week or two weeks ago. And, and all the people that asked them about Evostyle, they said, name, okay, nice, okay. But I was like, wow, this is a great, this great idea and, and the possibilities and what can it do and so on. And we will see now a video to show what you can do with it. Basically it shows the nano wallet and the Apple style service and it shows, like, it, it only mentioned uh, mosaics because this is like part two of the video and this, this video is not even released so we, we got early access to it. Maybe it will be redone in a better way. So we got a prototype of this video presenting the new version of NanoWallet. First of a series of, of videos on the whole abilities are explained. Okay, ah, yes, my use case is explained. Whew. Proof, tokenized, proof existing messaging. I think most of this we did talk already. That I think it's clear that you can do fundraising on ICOs and you can do, uh, you can uh, uh, make a representation of a company and shares on this blockchain and so on. So I think all these use cases, people are, are 
studying all kinds of abilities, not this. But I think what, what makes NAM really strong is first, it's no energy wasted, it's a own technology, and it's an it's a awesome toolbox with abilities. You, you, you have to be creative, and then you find out, oh, I, I could do this also, yeah? So, okay, looking ahead, there is, I did talk about it already, this, this NAM machine cooperation. Basically, this, this core developers of NAM are now paid employees of machine, and they're developing this catapult technology, which is rewrite the NAM, the Java based NAM into C. Because uh, even if banks said um, there are tests, it's nice, we could use it, it could fulfill all our use cases. Uh, they said, okay, but if we recode it in C, it's like three times, five times, ten times faster. Uh, and we can uh, implement other visions we have about the future of, of NAM. Uh, so they did it because they have the funding, they can work full time on it. And it makes this machine solution stronger. And this is really interesting cooperation between a private <coughs> blockchain and the uh, official global blockchain. Uh, yeah, and it basically it will transform in a free layer structure with the first of this kind, I know. And I don't know the full details, but I can just guess about it because if there's there's maybe some some early uh, white paper release, but in, I have to say I didn't read it, read it in all details. But the interesting part is they're using a normal database in between to uh, remove load of the uh, of the blockchain involved database. So basically, we, we all know. Uh, these blockchain explorers when, where you can look up data and there it doesn't look really you don't really look into the blockchain because this, this explorer is using a, a local database that's filled with data out of the blockchain yeah so uh, this is uh, speed up speeding up things yeah and if, if their api server is, is reading stuff from the Mongo, Mongo database which is i think the industry standard in some way uh, Eating correct, correctly in, in multiple ways, performance wise, um, uh, then you can remove load from the, the, real, the real server part with uh, handling the node to node part. And there's no security problem because even if someone would be able to manipulate data in this MongoDB, which would be easy possible, yeah? then if, you, if you're based on this wrong data, creating some transaction, if it goes down to the real node layer, then the transaction wouldn't work because he, he knows the real stuff, yeah? So it's no, no security loss in this way. Okay, yeah. And, and we did already talk about the, the front end is separated from the back. So now, now there's the video. They can take a few minutes rest. Or, or. This is Jeff. Hi, this is Jeff, and I am from the NEM team. I'm going to demonstrate the OSI service on the NEM wallet today. So the first thing we need to do is log in, and we're going to choose our wallet. You can have wallets on the NEM network, the testnet, or you can have ones on the NEM network, just like this one called Nano Demo Wallet. I'm going to enter my password and sign in. You can see my dashboard. <laughs> 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 